All right, welcome back to Adobe Animate CC. In this tutorial, we're actually going to create a background for this um, and bring it in. This is where we left off from our banner end. So you can see we, we obviously animated some text here. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer in the tab here and double click on it and call it background. And uh, this will be our background, background layer. And I'm going to drag it below the zombie title sequence here. And with it selected, I'm going to go to the file menu go down to import and import to stage. And I'm actually going to choose this image here, click open, and voila, I now have this image in here. Now, there is an issue where the text doesn't quite line up. It looks like the text that I resize is a little bit uh, smaller than the text down here. It's a re repeating of the text, a zombie outbreak warning. And I kind of want them to line up really precise. First thing I'm going to do is lock down my background. I don't ever need to animate the background, so I kind of want to leave it alone. You can always turn it on and off with the little eyeball here, but I have it locked down now. So on the zombie title, I'm actually going to click on the title here. And what I'll do is actually double click on the text and uh, isolate it. And it looks like it isolated over here. Uh, so let's double click out here. We want it to be on the first frame or the last frame when we do this. So I'm going to double click again and what I want to do is actually scale this up a little bit in what's called isolation mode. So when I double click on the text I went from the scene mode, uh, from, I'm sorry, from the zombie text movie into the scene which allows me to edit the static text. Now what I want to do is actually make it a little bigger and I can do that using the free transform tool. Now uh, I'm going to hold shift as I drag out and if you see it like popping like this, what's happening here is you have snapping enabled. So under the view menu, you can go down to snapping and you can see all these that are applied. So you can uncheck them. So you have the snap bitmaps to pickle, uh, pixels. Uh, and you have to go through and just uncheck each one. And that will basically allow you to um, modify it just right. So watch what happens now. As I adjust, it's not having quite that sensation of the snapping action. So I think about there would, would work pretty well. That's pretty close to what I want. While I'm in here, I actually do want to change the color of this text because right now it's black and it doesn't stand out. Well, again, I'm in isolation mode and you'll see here that over in the property palette, I have static text and I can edit this. So in the color palette, I'm going to click in here and choose this white for the color. And now I'm going to, to escape out, I'm going to double click outside in the stage and that brings me back to my sequence here. So now you can see the text really does stand out quite nicely. Now uh, there's one other feature I want to apply. I actually want to apply some drop shadow. It's a little hard to see with the text over the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it over uh, to the starting point and kind of do apply the um, effect while it's over here on the first frame. So I select the uh, text and it's under the filter menu. Uh, you can basically uh, open and close these little areas here. And the one that uh, I want to open is the filter. So after you twirl it open, you click on the little plus symbol here. And there's a couple different filters you can apply to this text. And the one I want to apply is a drop shadow. So I click on that. And at this point, I can see the effects here. So it's 100% strength and the blur is 4 and 4 by default. I can adjust the angle of that. But just by dragging this little guy here. Um, I kind of want the distance to pop out a little bit more. So I'm thinking around maybe 10 might be good. I do like the angle of maybe 42. That looks pretty good. And I was going to apply more blur, but actually I think that looks pretty good for the blur effect. So now uh, if I went to this keyframe, you'll notice what will happen is the blur is not there, that, or, nor the effect. Uh, so what we have to do is apply the effect on both keyframes. So in order to do that, a great way to do that is to select your uh, text here with the effect and you can see it here in the property palette. And instead of remembering all these different properties, you can go to this little widget here, this little option widget, and go down to copy selected filter. Then I can go to this keyframe and select it again click in here and go down to paste filter and just like that I have the filter applied which is pretty cool as I drag across you can kind of see the effect there now uh, I can also 
If I really love this filter and I want to keep it for other things, I can choose it as a preset. If I hit save as preset, I can name it and it will be in the filter population here. Don't really want to do that, but I just wanted to show you um, that possibility. So uh, as we hit enter return, you can see we've got the animated text along with a little drop shadow, which is kind of cool. So this ends this tutorial on adding a background and adjusting our type a little bit in Adobe Animate CC. Until next time, cheers.